As World War II came to an end, the world began to face the aftermath of the war. It's well known that the Nazis had attempted to eliminate all Jews. Many Jews fled to other countries, but not all were able to escape. Those unlucky Jews were sent far away from their families and countries of origin to work camps. After the war, these displaced Jews did not know what to do. Where were they to go? They'd lost everything, their family, their friends, and their homes. With nothing to return to, these Jewish people began to look for the only people who could possibly understand their plight, other Jews. For decades, Jews who wished to regain the Holy Land and establish Jewish communities had traveled to Palestine to create a safe place for Jews to live. These people were known as Zionists. They saw their end goal of an all-Jewish country as the perfect solution. After World War II, the Jews displaced by the war began to move to Palestine to unite with the Zionists. In 1948, their dream of a Jewish nation came true. The United Nations had voted in favor of partitioning Palestine and creating two separate nations, one for the Jews and one for the Arabs. The Jewish side became known as Israel, <clears throat> named after the Jewish ancestors, whose records they still revered. While the creation of Israel was celebrated by the Jews, their Arab neighbors were not happy. They felt that the Jews had stolen their property and that the United Nations had no right to give away half of their land to what they saw as illegal immigrants. The surrounding Arab countries immediately threatened Israel with the second Holocaust, claiming that they would obliterate all Jews. The new nation of Israel was unprepared to defend themselves. Many of their citizens had recently escaped concentration camps. They did not have the supplies to engage in the war, but the Jews were determined to never let another Holocaust happen to them again. They decided to fight to the bitter end to defend their way of life and their religion. While Israeli citizens fought bravely night and day, they recognized that they could not have done it alone. They owe a debt of gratitude to foreign volunteers. Known as the Haganah, these foreign volunteers came to Israel to defend the struggling nation. These volunteers left behind family, friends, and risked it all to support a country and a people that they knew little about. American volunteers, in particular, jeopardized their citizenship, as well as death by coming over, but this did not stop them. The most influential Haganah volunteers were American pilots who flew supplies into Israel, bombed enemy fighters, and taught Israeli citizens to fly planes as well. These pilots were specially recruited because control of the skies was an essential part of war. Brigadier General Billy Mitchell once said, the future of our nation is forever bound up in the development of air power. Israel knew this, which is why they developed so many resources to recruit American pilots to come help. The way that Israel acquired these names of potential pilots was quite ingenious. They stole U.S. military records and then scanned the lists of military men for pilots who had Jewish last names. They thought that American Jews would be more likely to feel sympathy for their religious brothers and come to help. It worked, and many young American Jews went to Israel to help them establish an air force. Israel had no planes, and no one was willing to sell them any. Fear of angering the Arabs of the Middle East caused Israel to look in other places for old aircraft. It became commonplace for Israeli operatives to search through junkyards filled with the leftover planes of World War II. When an old aircraft was recovered, it was fixed up and a Star of David was painted on it to show its new ownership to Israel. It was not uncommon for Israeli volunteers to be flying old Nazi planes with the Star of David sloppily painted over the swastika. Harold Livingston, an American volunteer, wrote in his memoir, The Irony, or if you will, poetic justice of Jews flying Nazi aircraft was obvious. Who would have thought that those who had been slaughtered by Hitler and the Nazis would only a few years later defend themselves against another enemy in the same planes that had tried to obliterate them? American Jewish volunteers were very different from Israelis. Many of them did not even speak Hebrew. Milton Rubenfeld, who had been raised Jewish in the United States, but had never learned the language or been particularly pious, had the misfortune of being shot down in Israel during one of his missions. He survived the crash, but climbed out, only to be mistaken by a group of Israeli farmers as the enemy. Desperate not to be killed by the people that he was defending, Milton searched his memory for any Hebrew that he knew. Remembering nothing but the ethnically Jewish foods that he had eaten as a child, he began listing them off rapidly. Luckily, the farmers thought that his yelling of foodstuffs was quite funny, and they noticed the Star of David on his plane. So instead of killing him, they welcomed him into their homes. The American volunteers in the War of Independence provided Israel with the expertise to fly planes, as well as train future pilots and leaders. As you can see here in this photo is Ezra Wiseman. He received extra formal training from American volunteers in the War of Independence. He later went on to become a great war hero in the Six Days War, as well as President of Israel. 
It was thanks to volunteers from all over the world that Israel was able to keep their land, stop the Arab invasion, and maintain their liberty.